Here's five shows you may have missed or forgotten about. The Lone Gunman. At the time, The X-Files was getting ready to end its long run. Within that series that focused largely on the exploits of federal agents Mulder and Scully was a group of brilliant but eccentric conspiracy theorists who called themselves the Lone Gunmen. The characters of Byers, Frohickey, and Langley first appeared on the 17th episode of Season 1 of The X-Files entitled EBE, which aired on February 18, 1994. Over the years, they would be in more and more episodes until finally, they decided to give them their own spin-off show. The Lone Gunman premiered on March 4, 2001. Despite dealing with some very serious subjects, it also had a heavy lean into comedy, and often slapstick-style humor. The pilot episode, in retrospect, was in and of itself huge conspiracy theory fodder. The plot was that a group of government agents planned to hijack an airplane and crash it into the World Trade Center. The reasoning behind this was that they would let terrorists take credit for the attack, which would plunge the U.S. into another highly profitable war. The episodes that followed covered a range of conspiracies, from water-powered cars to the mysterious Men in Black. The series had good critical reviews, but just couldn't keep its audience like the X-Files did. Perhaps it came a little too late in the life cycle of the X-Files. One of the creators of the show was Vince Gilligan, who genuinely loved the series and felt that it ended too soon. The show unfortunately had a consistent drop in viewers and was canceled with the last episode airing on May 11, 2001. They had 13 episodes with the last one ending on a cliffhanger. Not wanting to let the cliffhanger go unresolved, on April 21st there was an episode of The X-Files called Jump the Shark, which brought back the lone gunman to partially resolve the story of the cliffhanger. Gilligan later went on to create the incredible show Breaking Bad and its spin-off, Better Call Saul. The Lone Gunman is a genuinely good series, and if you like The X-Files, you're doing yourself a disservice if you've never seen it. It has the vibe of The X-Files, and each episode tells a great story. The show is released on DVD, and it even includes the Jump the Shark episode. It's still in print and not too expensive. It's not available for streaming, but the episodes are on YouTube. Not to go too deep into this, but on a show that was all about conspiracies... I can't not mention that roughly six months after the pilot was the terror attack on September 11th. It is scary how close the show predicted this. I'm not saying there's some grand conspiracy here, just that this was highly unusual and a pretty amazing coincidence. Just the Ten of Us. Just the Ten of Us was a spin-off of the TV sitcom Growing Pains. On Growing Pains, Bill Kirkenbauer played Coach Lubbock. Kirkenbauer was a stand-up comedian, and since every stand-up comedian had to be given their own show, they spun his character off into the series Just the Ten of Us. The show revolved around the coach, his wife, and his eight kids. Well, his seven kids, and the eighth one that was on the way. He loses his coaching job he had in Growing Pains, and gets a new job coaching at an all-boys private school. So the whole family has to move out of Long Island, New York, and to the suburbs of Eureka, California. Despite being an all-boys school, they make an exception to allow the coach's four older daughters to attend, which, of course, makes the boys of the school very happy. This sets up lots of comedic moments where the coach has to fight off a cavalcade of teenage boys vying for the girls' attention. The show premiered on April 26, 1988 on ABC. The network was still unsure as if this would be a hit, so they had the series do a trial run. The first season was only four episodes. The trial did so well, they expanded to season 2 with 20 episodes, and season 3 to 23. While the show initially started out focusing on the whole family, as it progressed, it became more and more about the four oldest daughters. In a somewhat humorous coincidence, three of the girls in the show had previously appeared in various movies from the Nightmare on Elm Street series. Joanne Willett, Brooke Thies, and of course, Heather Langenkamp. The show gives a little nod to this with the oldest brother, J.R., the horror enthusiast. He's seen at a few points wearing a Nightmare on Elm Street shirt. ABC moved the show around in their lineup until finally placing it as part of the inaugural lineup of the Friday Night TGIF block, along with Full House, Family Matters, and Perfect Strangers. Even with good ratings, the network still wasn't 100% behind the series. On its second week in the block, they ran a special preview of the show... Free Spirit, which didn't do well at all, so the week after that, they immediately returned to just the ten of us. 
It turned out that the other shows in the TGIF block were created by the production company Miller Boyette, while Just the Ten of Us was made by Gunselman Sullivan Marshall Productions. Since Just the Ten of Us was on at the 9.30 p.m. slot, ABC wanted to replace it with a more adult show that would lead into their long-running news series, 2020. With TGIF proving to be a huge success, Miller Boyette wanted their shows to cover the entire TGIF block, so they made a deal with ABC to create a new show that was a sitcom, but for an older audience. Despite the show pulling in very solid numbers, ABC didn't have any free time slots to place just the 10 of us, so they canceled it, despite its success. The last episode aired on May 4th, 1990. With 47 episodes, USA Network picked up the rights and continued to air reruns for some time to come. The show that replaced it was Going Places, a series about four young Hollywood writers living together. Going Places, forgive me, went nowhere (laughs) and was canceled after one season. Just the Ten of Us was never released on DVD and it's not available for streaming. The entire series is on YouTube, and more than likely, as some retro channel is airing it. ALF's hit talk show. Remember ALF? He's back! In pod form! ALF's hit talk show was an attempt to take the character and have him running a talk show. Considering the popularity of Space Ghost Coast to Coast from the 90s, someone at TV Land thought that they could do the same thing with ALF. Although it leaned more towards the traditional talk show as opposed to the parody of talk shows that was on Space Ghost. It did have a large dose of Alf's wit and sarcasm, though. The show premiered on July 7, 2004 on TV Land. The first show was a test where Alf interviews Drew Carey and Dennis Franz. The ratings were good enough to warrant additional shows, so they filmed six more and started airing them on November 12, 2004 on the TV Land cable channel. The show had a pretty solid lineup of guests from celebrities like Brian Cranston, Eric Roberts, and Linda Blair. Although with the format and the constant old leftover jokes from the sitcom, as well as Ed McMahon's confusion, it wore its thin premise even thinner. I personally have a high tolerance for this kind of nonsense, so it didn't bother me at all, but I could see mainstream audiences not really enjoying it. The last show aired on December 17th, 2004. It was an experiment and is considered a failed one. It's been listed as one of the worst talk shows in TV history. Although I think they should take a little solace in the fact that the show is not as disliked as the Chevy Chase show. While the original ALF series is on DVD with a bunch of bonus features, it does not include the talk show. As far as I can tell, the talk show has never been released physically and isn't on streaming, but all the episodes are on YouTube. The Golden Palace Golden Palace was the spin-off slash sequel to the immensely successful The Golden Girls. After seven seasons and 180 episodes, actress B. Arthur was done. She chose not to renew her contract, and so the network put together a big one-hour series finale. Dorothy marries Lieutenant Frank Drebin, and they move to Atlanta. The ratings were still high on Golden Girls, and the other actresses were interested in staying, even going so far as to suggest that they bring in a new Golden Girl for the original show. The network was against that, but instead put together The Golden Palace. The show premiered on September 18, 1992 on CBS. That's right, CBS. Golden Girls was on NBC, and when it came time for the spinoff, they weren't completely sold with the concept, so they only offered to produce a 13-episode season. The producers felt that wasn't good enough, so they were able to move the show to CBS, who was willing to produce a 22-episode season. The remaining girls, Rose, Blanche, and Sophia, sell the house in Miami and buy a Miami hotel, the Golden Palace. They discover, though, that there is only two employees left working there. Roland, the manager, played by Don Cheadle, and the chef, played by Cheech Marin. The thought process for this was that it could be something sort of along the lines of The Golden Girls meets The Love Boat, with a different set of guest stars appearing as hotel patrons each week. Some of the guest stars included Bobcat Goldthwait, Tim Conway, Harvey Corman, and George Burns. A few episodes in, they were able to bring back B. Arthur in a two-part episode where Dorothy spends some time at the hotel to check up on her mother. The ratings started off well enough with over 18 million people watching the pilot. After the first few weeks of high ratings, the network was sure they would greenlight this for another season. 
However, as the show progressed, there was a steady decline, with the last episode having less than 9 million viewers. The show was canceled, and the last episode aired on May 7, 1993. Another reason Golden Girls was successful was that the entire run was on Saturday nights. The Golden Palace was placed in a block of sitcoms on Friday nights in an attempt to battle ABC's juggernaut TGIF lineup. It didn't work because the TGIF block largely targeted families and kids, while the Golden Palace was for a more older demo. Which was something even ABC had to learn with Going Places. The audience wanted something for families, so they retooled Going Places to make it more appealing to that crowd. The ratings did improve after that, but they still canceled the series and replaced it with Baby Talk. The Golden Palace was shown in syndication, usually with the Golden Girls. Reruns popped up on channels like Lifetime. The series has never been released on DVD, but it is available for streaming on Hulu and Disney+. Plus. All the episodes are available on YouTube. While The Golden Palace was a spin-off of The Golden Girls, it's not the only one. Empty Nest was a successful spin-off in 1988, and then Nurses spun off from that in 1991. Baywatch Nights The original show Baywatch was one of the most successful TV shows in syndication history. Looking to continue that success? David Hasselhoff presented the network with the concept of doing a spin-off. Lifeguard by Day Detective by Night this was the basic premise for the initial run of Baywatch Nights. They filmed a pilot that David Hasselhoff put together to get the network interested. It's his character, Mitch, narrating how he and the cop from the show, Sergeant Ellerby, opened a detective agency in a nightclub called Nights. The first episode aired on May 18th, 1996. Mitch's friend, Sergeant Ellerby, quits the police force and starts his own detective agency. He brings in Mitch to help, as well as another detective, Ryan McBride, played by Angie Harmon. This was also Angie Harmon's first major role. The trio are hired to solve various crimes, and it's essentially what you think it is. Baywatch mixed with a crime show. There's an episode where Mitch goes undercover as a gigolo, and it's just amazing! To help make the show a little sexier, they brought in Playboy playmate Donna Dierico to play Donna Marco starting with episode 11 and continuing for the rest of the series. The first season didn't do so well, so the showrunners got really ambitious for season two. This is where I feel the series really took off. They dropped the detective angle and went full on X-Files. Gregory Allen Williams left the show and they brought in Diamant Teague, played by Dorian Gregory. He was a paranormal expert that had ties to various underground groups. Season 2 was delightful, with the team investigating ghosts, demons, sea monsters, and even aliens. It's even funnier when you consider that there was an episode where Mitch was possessed by a demon one night, and then was back on the beach as a lifeguard the next day. It seems like something that would have been played like a parody, but it was done serious. Well, about as serious as Baywatch was. Sadly, the show just didn't hit with normal audiences, and the show was cancelled. The last episode aired on May 17th, 1997. It ran for two seasons with 44 episodes. The show was released on DVD in Australia in 2013, but as of currently, it doesn't look like it's available physically elsewhere. The series is not available for streaming, but you can watch it on YouTube. Season 2 is one of my all-time favorite bad shows, and I'm sad we don't have like 10 more seasons. That's another 5 shows. Yes, I'm aware there are plenty of other forgotten spin-offs that I will most likely cover in future installments. What, do you think I would never talk about the Ropers? How long has it been, huh? But you're still bald. And you're still black. 